Hi, it's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel, and today we are doing discussions. And we'll be using the random discussion generator, generator. generator <laughs> to discuss, to, to generate our discussions. Uh, there are over 30 topics in there, of which we, we, if one comes up that we've already covered, we will obviously press the generator again and find another one. Uh, so let's get to it. Let's start the generator. Let's go. Shall I press it? Now. No, we got a blank screen. That oh. does happen. <laughs> if you, there could be the chance where you get a mat in between a frame. Let's start again. Okay, what killed or is killing small <laughs> oh, music venues? Oh, topical, topical debate. Topical. topical. COVID-19. Next question. <laughs> no, so, uh, okay, so the generation of this idea is... So mid-sized venues uh, can still do okay. Uh, a lot of your bigger bands will go to there. The small venues, so we're, we're hearing it from different sides. So the bands are complaining that there are not enough venues for them to play. We, we know that over 100 venues are dropping every year uh, across the country. So small venues are really, really struggling. Uh, we're hearing that some small bands are saying there's not enough venues for them to play, uh, to build a crowd build an audience uh, we're finding venues are complaining that people are just not attending to come out to shows which is causing them to go, to kind of revert to tribute bands where they know there is a guaranteed income coming through uh, and then obviously we've got, venue, uh, got uh, bands are complaining that they're not getting the Friday Saturday slots at venues uh, because there's the tribute bands are playing <laughs> so uh, the general discussion then is in your opinion what has killed music venues or what is slowly killing the small music venue and share your thoughts I've, I've had a bit more time having come up with a lot of these discussion yeah. topics to have a think about why this topic came into my head um, so I will go last on what my opinion is on well, you've one. covered some of the key points I think um, I mean for me personally it's it, it's the cost of an evening out now yep you know it's, it's the current situation in Britain 2024 just the whole amount of money you have to spend on on a, on a night out it's not just the ticket to uh, enter the venue it's it's getting there it's getting home mm. you know never you go buy drinks and food while you're there especially if it's a like an all day or an afternoon yeah. that leads into the evening because ticket prices is one of the cheapest things on there because half the venues are now doing like free entry ones that, that's true yeah. i've seen that and yeah. they're still not getting turnouts yeah. even on free entries yeah um <sighs> So cost of living could be the issue. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it's, and, and time as well. You know, I've I've got a you know a lot of things going on in my life. I, I there wasn't many shows at Club Eighty Five that I didn't go to. To be honest, metal. Uh, if there's at least one band that I knew and liked, I'd, I'd go along and hopefully, you know, check out some new bands for me mm. that, that I'd really enjoy and start to follow, which has happened. When I you know I thank everybody, whoever whoever I've watched at Club Eighty Five and all the other local venues in Hertfordshire. Um, but I think for me. Is, is, is what, I've, what I've said, you know, the, the time and the cost of the, the evening. You know, so, so sometimes the, the, the frequency as well, you know, we find that it's not, you know, there, there was a local promoter who used to do a metal night at the Red Line in Steam, it was once a month, last Friday month or whatever, and you kind of put it in your calendar think, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll look forward to that. But now they're kind of, you know, rightly so random, most weekends or whatever. And for me, sometimes it's a little bit too much that you can't then commit yourself to going to all the ones you want to go to. So, got, so I have to pick and choose sometimes. Yeah. And the reason I have to pick and choose is, is money and time availability. Excuse me. That, imagine if so <laughs> if it was down to two pound a pint and free entry, would you go to loads more gigs? Absolutely. Okay. See, I wouldn't. That wouldn't change me. Would it not? No. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't bring me back to you know. You mentioned Kurt pandemic you know pre-pandemic levels it wouldn't bring me quite back yeah. to that scale but i'd certainly go to a lot more if the night out physically cost me less money because for me one of the things you said there time yeah would be the issue for me not the money side of it because yeah. the money night going out in a weird way isn't as big of an issue uh from a financial point of view but the time it takes and that time out of an evening means i have to give up a lot of other stuff and i i almost weigh up as a benefits and concern versus doing it so what's the pro of me going to yes supporting the local scene etc but the con of it is i've now got to stop doing anything else i had planned to go and do that yeah you said about free entry there, there was there's been some recently which were free entry as you as you say that they're, they're, they're popping up 
certain venues are do free entry and everything. But the time element is the factor there. You want to go and support, in most cases, friends and people you know who's banned, but you think it's the time, isn't it? I can't, can I really justify another evening out? Yes, yeah. I'd have a great time, but in hindsight, you think that's affecting other elements mm. and factors in my life, which is a shame because I really want to do that. Yeah. For lots of reasons, personally and for the people involved, but it's a hard decision to make. Yeah. Some Friday, Saturday nights when these things come around. What about you, Kurt? Well, let's have a look at the economics of it then. The easy. Oh, fucking hell, we're getting into the... economics now. <laughs> oh, well, that's the question. Can't, can't just go off the cuff. <coughs> the, the, the easy target is gentrification, which I don't think what? is causing it. But if we look at Club Come, 85... Can you just mentioned. explain gentrification for us? So that, that's when, <laughs> that, that's when um, high-earning people move back into neighbourhoods that they'd left 40 years ago. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. So, like, for example, Hackney in East London, which was an absolute waste ground in the early 90s and now is one of the most expensive places in Europe, never mind England. I don't think that's causing it, but let's look at Club 85 in Hitchin. Okay, so whoever owns a music venue... If they decide to sell up, you've got an amenity that serves the community, and then you've also got the commercial bonanza that would come with selling it to a developer, and it gets made into flats. Club 85 is a great example. That's got to be one reason why, because the ownership model, when they decide that they've had enough and they want to sell it, why would you actively seek out someone else to take over that venue? It could be run as a non-profit or as a community yeah. venture, very difficult to sustain and when you've got retirement ahead of you and the developer can pay you three times what you would get yeah if you were just selling it to retain it for uh, entertainment purposes or as a, a but, if, if that was, then... yeah, but if that was having a free uh, that's a two seven two hundred and seventy five capacity venue so if that was having every time four or five nights a week two hundred and seventy five people through the door you wouldn't need to sell it if yeah, it's having but... attendances well, well, no. I mean, if we, if we use Club 85, surely that's a, a personal decision of the owner, isn't it? It is, but he could have easily. If that was if that was a packed venue every night of gig goers, there would have been a real kind of... There would have been an onus on him to go, do you know what? This is making me a lot of money into retirement. I can then send that as a, sell that as a working concern because actually anyone who wants to take this on has got a business that's got a fundamental established base of 275 people at night coming here to watch music. The question is... And then that he would have been able to sell that venue to them as a property at a much higher rate because you've got the business. He couldn't do that right now because there was no guaranteed income from it. By the way, let's also... When I said at the beginning, COVID-19 was the death knell for many venues in the industry. It was dead dead before COVID. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And that that revealed the the weaknesses, didn't it? Yeah, they they were hanging on and then that wiped them out. Uh, In terms of pricing, it is important. Andy, I agree. When you look at it, inflation is now down below 3%. It was at 10% 18 months ago. Prices go up. Do those prices ever go back down for the price of a pint? Very rare. Same with your price of your rent. If, if you rent yeah, a property. Goes up, that's just no, that, that's the point. Yeah, yeah, purchasing parity. If you look at the price of a Mars bar from 1973 to 2023, that's just going to continue to go up. I'm I'm a bit like you, Dave, and that doesn't really put me off unless it was exorbitant. If I knew the venue was charging £10 a pint, then I would make a stand. So I think that's absurd. I've not been to a venue, a grassroots venue that's doing that. Um, turnout has got to be an issue. I think you were hinting there also at the quantity of events that are on. I, I'm like you. I'm sacrificing something to come to this. I, you know, I, we've all got creative endeavours. I can't go to a, a, a club three nights a week because I've got other things that I need to be doing as well. And when you've got bands playing the same venue every three weeks, we come across this all the time. It's going to put you off, actually. You, you know, even if you're friends with them because you just think, oh, I'll see them in three weeks' time. But I don't think we've really got down to the issue. What, what, in your opinion, is killing small music venues? So there's no one particular thing. So I tried to nail this down to one particular thing. You've already covered the economy. So yes, cost of living is a factor. The thing I think is the biggest issue is we do not have the young... So if I think about being 18, 19, 20, my entire weekend, every weekend, I was at gigs. So you, you had you had your money that came in. It was a limited amount of money, but you didn't have another form of release. That was where you went. You either went to a rock and metal bar, 
your mates, you went to Camden or whatever it was, or you went and watched a gig if there was a gig on. So you were always out in the scene. One thing I've noticed going to gigs is I don't know where those fuckers are. I, where, where, where's the 18, 20, 19, uh, 20 year olds? All I ever see is yeah. us old codgers mm -hmm. at the gigs. That's true. You know, where's rare, the youth? You see... I don't see them. Yet in the other scenes, like uh, dance, hip hop. Now you go to there when, when like Club 85 when it has a drum and bass night on, packed. Yeah. When you have the covers bands on, packed. When you have an originals rock and metal band, where the fuck is the youth? When you get a local so what are they doing? metal band now. <laughs> so the problem we have is the rock metal scene of the, the youth of the rock metal scene, unfortunately what they've then got is the other thing that's killed off uh, venues is the internet. Because now everyone wants to be an internet, everyone's fucking starting YouTube channels. Sure. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> but what they do is everyone thinks that's their route. They've got their TikToks, they've got everything else that they all want to do it. The other, other issue, is the people, and this is something actually talking to the uh, to Bob and Cassie at Club 85, we were talking about attendances uh, and stuff, and they said the problem you've got within music scene is everyone that used to be a fan is now a fucking musician. Yeah, certainly in metal and hardcore. Because when I was 18, 19, 20, the availability to be able to record and write your own music was very difficult. Yeah. You were lucky if you got a guitar. Yeah. You definitely didn't have more than one. And trying to find a band to join was really difficult. You had to find. I mean, I tried. Was. Mine was loot. That was the paper. You used to buy, get the loot paper every weekend, and you'd have all the classifieds about yeah. people looking for bands. And that's how you used to find people. Now you got a website, instantly do it. Find a rehearsal studio, set up a recording thing on your laptop, start yeah. recording your own music. Which, by the way, is not a bad thing. It's not. That's great for people with artistic aspirations. That but you can do it all yourself. What you've then got is all your musicians, or all your people that are into this music, are spending all their bloody money on instruments and stuff. That's yeah. and rehearsal <coughs> studios, which means they have even less money to go out. Yeah. And they can't afford to go and support other bands because they're in their own bands themselves and they know they've got a gig coming up. So that's another big factor of it. And so that's poss possibly killing off yeah, the live music shout, scene. Yeah. Uh, festivals are so expensive and there's so many of them throughout the season that when people know that they've got download coming up on Bloodstock and they know they've got to save up several hundred pounds to go to that, they won't yeah, go to that. gigs. I've heard that, yeah. They can't afford to. Yeah, not coming this week, we've got Bloodstock coming up. Yeah, I've heard that. You've raised the issue about bands playing. So again, if I look at it go, right, uh, a band's come out to play, oh, I could go and support them, but you know what, they're probably next month playing another gig. Oh, oh I won't bother. I'll catch them on the next time. Yeah. And there's no exclusivity of bands. They just seem to book as many gigs as they can. Any time a gig gets offered, they'll jump on it. Uh, a, a venue that does do this, and I'm not sure if it's always a good thing that they've done it, they do, they, but they, they do support the scene, is obviously the 6 6 bar. I've seen the same bands on there within a two, three month period multiple times mm -hmm. on different lineups, different bills. But that means that for the chance of me actually going, yes, you've got more opportunities to see them, but the likelihood of me going three times to watch them is not going to happen, maybe once. And if they've got a limited fan base, you've yeah. then limited them right down. And so there's, three, the there's, there's three different lineups for three different metal nights, you're more likely to go than. If it's three different lineups, I will pick one of them if it's right. a band that I'm really into. But that means that if that was if it was three different nights with three different completely different sets of bands, there's more of a chance I will go to all mm. three of them. But by having the same bands mixing over different nights, if you're only into one big band, let's say Lowdown for instance, I might pick one night out of theirs to go to, I'm not going to go to all three of theirs. Yeah. There's no, apart from trying to support them, but you, you generally you're not going to go out and do that and see the same band time and time again. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it from the other perspective. You were saying, you know, the availability of technology and you can put out a high quality sounding album in your bedroom as a band. But if you think about it, if you want to make a living out of music, it's more important than ever to have a live presence. Very few bands would get signed now if they don't have a live band behind them. So a live band is important, but a live gigging is less now. But if you don't it's a have, reversal now, if, if you don't go you down do that route and build up an Instagram following and YouTube, then it's very difficult. You're still going to have to go through that route, aren't you? Of but none of, none of which, circuit. none of which you require to play a gig live for any of those things you mentioned there to build your following up. None of that. Yeah, but that's... but the venue is important. But if you're spending all your time as a band playing gigs you're not building your following up online because trust me if there's only five people in the crowd you're going to spend the next 20 years trying to get enough people to fill the venue once so you've raised another question i know we won't go down this rabbit hole but i'm going to mention it the trade-off now the modern musician between 
content creation for social media and building up your following and actually writing music and performing music. And live shows, yeah. Yeah. And that those is a discussion two, topic on here yeah, as well. That, so we'll schism, save that, one. that schism is creating so much tension and it, it's to me, I think even Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park made a comment about this. He said, Now you have to divert so much of your time to just doing videos for TikTok and YouTube and you forget about writing music. You forget about who you're writing it for. Here's the thing with the we talked about the youth, we raised the youth. <laughs> yeah. But they're the they're the people watching your TikToks and stuff. So they are your that's what you're creating for. They're not coming to your gigs yeah. unless you're playing a big festival, then they'll come. That's what I'm seeing is the people that they the, the youth today are going to the festivals. And they wanna see they want bang for their butt, they wanna see all their bands. Want, they're not going to come to your local band venue to see it. They are going to wait for the big concerts, or they're going to spend their money on Sleep Token at Wembley or something. Yeah, that's a that's, good one. And that's their big one. They're saving up for that. They're not spending, and then because they're not spending the money like we would have done on CDs and stuff like that, they're just watching content online. Does it also does it also matter what's popular in the scene? I always say, Hertfordshire, certainly North Hertfordshire, sludge metal, sludge grind. Pulse metal, stoner metal. These are not genres that nineteen-year-old kids play. You don't. You they, no one at age nineteen thinks I'm going to form a, a, a pulse metal band that sounds traumatic. They, they might form like a you know aggressive deathcore band. But the bands in in Hertfordshire, we don't. Do we have? A, I mean, yeah, we do have Dead Flesh. We don't have any bands that play the, that, that like disruptive. Sleep talking type but what music. We also don't have is, but what we don't also have is an audience base. No. We have a lot of bands. Mm. And this was again something that we raised, not specifically on this, but having chats with people, is that we have everyone in the Hertfordshire metal scene plays in a band. There's very little as far as people that come out just to watch music. There's an older generation that still do that are into the classics mm-hmm. uh, and stuff like that. You know, the old codgers, the old new wave of British heavy metal fans and stuff like that. But as far as like uh, deathcore sort of stuff, uh, and Lorna Shaw, there's not that much sort of fan base of just core fans that are just into that sort of thing. And that's why they haven't really found those, that, that, that scene. But you do see that scene in London still. Yeah. So it's the generation of where that gap is. But I don't think we've completely got it, but we have thrown a lot of ideas in there. But I would, my question is, is where's the youth? Because I don't yeah, see that scene. Yep. Where is the youth? Where is the youth? That's you a song fuckers. by Knights of Ad. Come out and support live music, you little bastards. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed our video today, please do like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care.